So today I'm going to show you how to use our one step paint and actually we've been really wanting to have a piece in the store where it shows half of it finished and half of it unfinished to show the potential. So today we're going to walk you through it. So first of all, we are going to tape off the middle of this so that we can show you a before and an after. We are going to use a roller brush on the flat surfaces, a brush on the not flat surfaces. Um, we are going to use our one step paint in goalie gray. We're going to finish it off with a wax. But first step is going to be to use clean slate to make sure that we get off all of the gunk on there. So this clean slate has no wax derivatives in it and it's going to clean it off really nice. There's a lot of scratches on this one. If you're somebody who wants it to be absolutely perfect, I would recommend sanding it down a little bit or filling it in with some wood filler. Um, I kind of like vintage scratches, so I'm okay with them. This type of paint, sometimes if you leave it in a can for a long time, all of the sediments can go to the bottom. So make sure this one I shook really well. It also makes sure um, if it's been in the can for a long time that you use a stir stick. I like to add a little bit of water, about 10% typically, and then I'm gonna mix it up. I'm someone who doesn't love to see the streakies very much, and so I always like to add the water because it thins it out a little bit and makes it not so thick. Mix it up, that's good. I use a high nap roller brush. I just got this at Home Depot. It'll come across as a little bubbly in the beginning when it goes on, but those will all go down. Another trick to this is once you've gone over it, just let it dry. Don't try to go back over it in a minute or two because this paint dries so fast that if you try to go back over it, you're gonna pull it because the top of it's gonna dry and the bottom of it's gonna still be wet, so you're gonna have pull marks, and you definitely don't want those. Okay, so the first coat is dry, and I do like to come in and just very lightly go over it, because sometimes you can get these little bumps on the first coat, typically. And as I said, I really like it to have a smooth finish. Now you can see with coat number two, looks so much better. Okay, so we are gonna finish this off. It actually has like two and a half coats of paint, two full coats and then one light coat. Um, and then this is the Minder of Beeswax. You don't have to use this, but I like to use it because it adds ooh, the extra layer of protection. It's been a day, the paint has dried, we have put wax on it, and so the next day you take an old t-shirt, a rag, whatever you want, you can even take steel wool, and you just buff it out, just to get any of the excess off, that kind of stuff. And then I'm gonna show you why I'm a huge fan of using the Mind Your Own Beeswax, is because if you didn't have the wax, it would just soak right into the paint, and with the wax on it, it now creates a barrier, so if like liquids or anything spills on it, it makes it really, really durable. So we've painted it, we've let it dry, we have waxed it, and now um, I'm gonna come in with a brush and we're gonna bring detail to the piece. And so when you're working with a dark wax, what I like to think of is if this piece were old, where would fingers have touched it the most? Because that's where I want to go a little heavier with the brush. So people probably would have brushed up against the side, right? So over here, we're gonna go heavier. If you have a wax underneath it, you can still move it even after you've put it on with a um, rag. So it's okay to really get it on there because there's a wax underneath it that's protecting it from staining the paint. So then you can remove some. I like to really get it down into the crevices too. 
So I kind of chip it in there. On the flat parts, it's a little bit more complicated. In these areas, you can really chip it in and then wipe it off. I like to, when I go into these areas here, the flat areas, I grab it from the end of the brush and I just use a very loose hand so that it's not exact. Okay, so I'm finished glazing it. I'm gonna let it set for 24 hours and then I'm gonna come back over it with my Euro beeswax and then uh, let that set for a few hours and then buff it out so that it's trapped underneath the wax and it can't lift. So there you go. There's before with just paint and then there's also with antique wax that gives it more of that vintage glazed look.